What is going on, everybody? And welcome back into Barley Studios. Who's excited for some canvas work? Yes, I am too. I said that I wanted to create more canvas work in some of my previous videos, and I'm finally breaking down and beginning to create some of them. Now, all of these are in acrylics. I really haven't been working with oils in a very, very long time. So everything that I create here, at least uh, most recent, is going to be uh, acrylic painting. Uh, this painting in particular is a gift for my son for either his birthday or Christmas coming up. Uh, and this is of Charmander. Now, this is actually a Pokemon card that my daughter had chosen out. And I'll post a picture of that in the top left-hand corner. There's the Pokemon card. Uh, and then the original illustration of this Pokemon card, I will list his name above. There it is. So just so you know, I, like I said, I wanted to create more canvas work here on YouTube. All this, of course, will be time lapse. And depending on if I open up memberships in the future, some of this will be uh, extreme time lapse. And then the paid membership will be uh, slowed down to a shorter or a smaller time speed. That way uh, people can kind of keep track of what colors I'm using. I may even eventually introduce like a color swatch at the top right hand corner of the corner. So you can kind of see what colors I'm using when I'm using the paintbrush, things like that. Now this is a very simple uh, uh, painting here. This is a master's touch. Uh, I think it's a one and a half deep canvas. And I had layered the canvas with one thick layer of gesso, uh, sanded it slightly so that I could get a really ultra smooth surface. One of the biggest challenges that I had as I used to paint and what became most frustrating for me is that I was always able to see the canvas tooth through the painting at close look. And that really bothered me just because I'm always painting kind of close up to the canvas. But when you step up away from it, you really don't see that. And it kind of bugged me when I'm painting and kind of blending colors and I can see some of those white teeth popping through. It just always bothered me. It always threw me off and I always felt like I had to build up so many layers just to get the smoothest that I wanted. So I'm really trying to challenge myself to get a smooth canvas at the get go. That way I don't have to waste so much paint building up colors or, or getting discouraged because the underpainting isn't really turning out how I want to. Uh, I also just remember that if I want to apply more layers, then I can just keep going and going and going until I do so. And if you get to the point where you don't like what you're painting or, or you want to start over from complete scratch, give it a light sanding and then just put another layer of uh, base layer down and start all over again. I do really like these deeper canvases. I feel like they just have uh, more of an archival look. It makes me feel like when I do finally finish the painting in itself, then they just have a really nice um, uh, ornate look to them. They look more professional as opposed to just the cheapos that you buy from Michaels. I've been getting these on sale at Hobby Lobby. They've been really clearance recently and I've, I've been stocking up on them and using them for so many paintings that I look forward to releasing over the next year or so. Now, again, this is a painting of Char or Charmander in acrylics. Uh, this is Charmander standing on the, the stump. Now, in the Pokemon card that I had, had showed, it does have rain in that picture. I decided uh, with consulting my wife that we were going to leave the rain out of this just because it's going to be something fun and, and cutesy that is going to be hanging in my son's room after he receives this as a gift. And I just didn't want to uh, introduce too much dreariness to the painting. So I did decide to leave those raindrops off of Charmander. Now this is, uh, I think, roughly in, uh, say, 12 times speed or so. I uh, will probably re maybe release a even quicker speed later on down the road that I may private and then release later. However, go ahead and sit back and enjoy the music as we run through this awesome painting of Charmander.
I don't know if anybody else ever has trouble with trees. I do like to kind of like hand paint them in. Uh, sometimes I'll use some like uh, masking tape or some painter's tape to kind of like quickly add them on. But I wanted to make sure that these kind of uh, honored the original image that was on the Pokemon card. And they are kind of angled up towards the center top of the canvas. Kind of like you're looking up at them, uh, uh, you know, from below Charmander here. And you're looking from below the stump up at him, just like the Pokemon um, anime. So I want to make sure I kind of, kind of capture all of those trees kind of going up into the center. And then as they uh, disappear into the canopy of the trees, I want to make sure that some of these, these uh, tree trunks are visible. One of the biggest stum uh, stumbling blocks that I have when I paint trees sometimes is I feel like they all look the same. And, and then really that is the case for a lot of paintings is because they're supposed to be all the same in some ways. Unless you're going out of your way to add a lot of diversity to the trees, they kind of blend into each other and... I was very careful not to make the, the bark or the white highlights on these trees too deep um, as opposed to the rest of the canvas. And I want to make sure that I lighten up the background behind those trees with a little bit of gray tones, just enough so that it really blends well and it really doesn't pull the eye too much away from Charmander. Now I did block in Charmander for the, Charmander for the most part with a little bit of Mars Black there and I kind of highlighted his belly. Uh, which which I imagine would be some softer skin, kind of like a, like a lizard would have, or maybe the underbelly of a snake. And I wanted to make sure that I, I create that lighter tone. Now, I'm gonna not going to make that belly a, a titanium white. It is going to be more of a Naples yellow, dinged out with some burnt umber. And I'm going to kind of blend that in roughly so that it just has a nice kind of skin texture. And we'll make sure that the, the bottom of the tail and the, the, the shading of the tail really, uh, really fits well with the existing body and, and the belly that I put on Charmander here. But as you kind of see me start to uh, frame in his body, I'm going to introduce more uh, cadmium orange hue, uh, a little bit of cadmium red hue, as well as some cadmium yellow hue. Uh, I will use a little bit of alizarin crimson on some of the deeper uh, shadowed areas where maybe his orange skin is kind of shadowed and is bringing out some red tones. So I will introduce that as well. So, so depending on that, I'm mainly sticking to my yellow, orange, and reds for his body tone and then I'll introduce a little bit of burnt umber just to give them some dirty dingy highlights over the navel's yellow belly and tail. So sit back and enjoy as we run through painting Charmander here.
I think Charmander is really coming along here. Now, as you can see, the eye really kind of brings it to life. And I did keep that eye kind of cartoonish, but I did shade around it kind of like in a realistic tone. So instead of creating those hard uh, Mars black edges or cartoon highlights, I'm going to kind of leave those soft and blend them with some shading. And then after I get done with the main, main part of, uh, of, of kind of blocking in and, and highlighting a little bit of Charmander, I'll begin working on more so the background. And every so often, I'll come back to Charmander and add like a little highlight here or there, introduce a little bit of a yellow or a redder tone on the body, trying to create some highlights and de some definition, kind of shading around the, the uh, ankle joints where they would be a little bit shadowed or the, the, bottom right, uh, the bottom right and left of that belly where it kind of curves underneath his left leg there. Uh, just kind of bringing in some small details and working them slowly into the overall design so that it holds the cartoonish look, but at the same time, it does have quite a bit of shading and some, some life to it. I want to kind of introduce my painting style into this and uh, kind of just not just overwash what the original uh, illustration had showed on the Pokemon card, but just kind of introduce my, my painting style as well. And I think that's what's important here is introducing my style so that my son can enjoy this art on his wall. Uh, and then that way I'm not kind of just uh, hand tied or, or uh, handcuffed to the original image.
right so as you can see here we're still in time lapse and i'm just finishing up the flame there i did apply a lot of thin layers there just so i could really get a nice really over blend of colors there uh, using the same oranges but i really lean towards more of the alizarum crimson uh, and a little bit more of the alizarum uh, um, cadmium yellow hue about said alizarum crimson again uh, not that much lizard and crimson. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give my artist art signature here with an acrylic marker there. I really like those. They're really quick and easy to sign things. And I will go ahead and paint the exterior of the canvas. And I've also rolled that around to the back where we will also be doing a kind of a one hour timed graphite sketch on the back of the canvas. Not the best sketch of a uh, charmander, but it's just something cute and simple and easy. And I plan to do that for all my paintings. Here it is against the existing Pokemon card. And I really do hope you all enjoyed this video. Catch, uh, make sure you check out all of the other playlists that I have. And now we're going to move on in the playlist of Charmander to the graphite sketch on the back. I will catch you guys later. Thanks, guys.